I picked a few out of campus publishing houses in Hall 3. Julian Backhaus is headed to Frankfurt with a staff member. They're traveling by private jet. Taking public transport is pretty gross at the moment, sharing a cabin with snotty-nosed people coughing everywhere. I avoid it as much as I can. It's a short trip from Wilhelmshaven to Frankfurt, just about 500 kilometers. Traveling by private jet may be convenient, but it certainly does the climate no favors. You don't care about climate change? I don't think about it much. If everyone behaved like you and flew as often as you do, then it wouldn't work. But luckily, the population is split into different groups, and I'm part of the small fraction that can get away with it. Private jets, fast cars, yachts. Generally, the richer people are, the more they contribute to global warming. In the last few years, we've seen that one key element of being wealthy is how much it harms the planet. How much longer can we afford the indulgent lifestyle of the rich? I'm just reading the article about you in Manager magazine. Very cool. Congratulations. Julian Backhaus is a publisher of finance and business magazines. Today he's going to the Frankfurt Book Fair. The flight takes about an hour. What's the flight cost? About 4,000 euros per hour. So there and back, two hours will set you back 8,000 euros. More and more rich people travel this way. The number of private jet flights in Germany increased by 9% within one year. Don't you feel guilty living at the expense of others? That's not really the case. I'm not stopping anyone from doing the same. Others could do it, but they don't. Is that OK? It's OK for me, and I don't think I'm actively harming anyone. If that were the case, I'd probably think about it more often. But so far, I haven't seen how I'm deliberately or actively harming anyone. But carbon emissions are harmful to others. In fact, to all of us. A flight by private jet emits tons of greenhouse gases. We're already experiencing the consequences of climate change today. After all, the climate crisis has long since arrived. Fires, droughts, floods. With increasing frequency in more and more places. If global warming is not slowed down soon, large parts of the Earth will become uninhabitable. I believe that civilization as we know it would end, and certainly our idea of a humane society would be over. Professor Hans-Joachim Schellenhuber is one of the most renowned climate researchers in the world. His findings are simple and unequivocal. Humans must severely restrict CO2 emissions. Our own survival depends on it. To reach that target, we calculate that each person on the planet is allotted three tons of CO2 emissions per year by mid-century. So on average, each person's carbon footprint should be three tons of carbon dioxide per year. This short trip is responsible for three tons of emissions. In theory, Julian Backhaus has used up his entire year's CO2 allowance with this flight alone. I'm afraid I have some bad news. Due to heavy rain in Egelsbach and because the runway is relatively short, we've decided to fly to Frankfurt Main. Would Julian Backhaus cut down on flights and accept a CO2 cap that's the same for everyone? 
I think restrictions like that are pointless. We live in a world that affords us a certain abundance, and I think everyone should have the right to enjoy that. And he does have that right. No one is stopping Julian Backhaus from flying by private jet as often as he likes. Can you contact Egelsbach? My chauffeur is waiting there. Already done. Can you send him to Frankfurt Main? Already done. He's on his way over. Terrific. See you later. Thank you. Very few people can afford private jets or other luxuries which are harmful to the climate. Do these few people make a big difference? Data shows that the richest 1% of the world's population emit extremely high amounts of greenhouse gases. 8.5 billion tons per year. To put that into perspective, that's more than the 6.1 billion tons produced by the entire poorer half of the world's population. Meanwhile, in the German town of Zande in Lower Saxony, Elvira Klein is cycling home from work. Flights by private jet are inconceivable for the Klein family. Bicycle is the family's main means of transportation. We don't want to use our car too much. Fuel prices are really high and we're thinking about the environment. She has to leave soon to take her daughter to choir practice. Emma, time to go. Her husband works as a cook in a hospital. Combined, the Klein's net monthly income totals about 2,600 euros. That puts them in the bracket of lower middle class. Come on. Coming. Have fun. See you later. Money has always been tight for the Kleins. Now that prices keep rising, it's becoming a real problem. Taking their daughter to choir practice is one of the rare occasions when they use their car. We drive there because Emma can't manage it by bike in that time. It's 10 kilometers each way. Her diesel car emits 0.005 tons, or 5 kilograms of CO2. Elvira Klein would be able to drive her daughter to choir practice 600 times before she equaled the carbon footprint of a short trip in a private jet. But given the high fuel prices, it's unlikely to come to that. When diesel is expensive, we spend more on that and there's less left over for food and clothing. We have to cut back on other things. Mostly it eats into our vacation budget. That's not so bad. Visiting Auntie is like going on vacation. She's got a huge pool with LED lights. But we still have to drive there, Emma. That costs money too. Is driving a luxury for you? It's become one. Have fun! People on tighter budgets tend to pollute the environment less. On the other side of Germany, nearby Reut, members of the German Maserati Club are meeting up to go for a drive. Money seems to be no object here, even in these costly times. What's special about driving a Maserati is the fascination for this car. I guess you could call me an old petrol head. Driving these vehicles in my free time is a real joy for me. 
zu fahren in meiner Freizeit. For many years, Heiner Brühl worked as an engineer for a large car company. Most Maseratis guzzle a lot of gas. On this weekend trip alone, Heiner Brühl will produce 0.3 tons of CO2. Theoretically, that would equal one-tenth of his annual CO2 allowance, just for this one weekend. The group stops at a car museum. The museum has two floors. The motorcycles are on the middle floor. There are a few Italian models and some Maseratis mixed in. Driving a Maserati or saving the climate, for the people here, it's a hard overhead decision. How pressing is the problem of climate change for you? The problem of climate change is certainly very pressing, there's no question about that. The scientific evidence we've seen over the last 10 to 15 years paints a very clear picture. But would they give up their joy rides to stop climate change? We're in a climate crisis and you drive for fun and emit CO2 as a hobby. Does it make you think twice? No, not at all. And I'll tell you why. The cars we drive, I mean classic cars, vintage cars, they are more than 30 years old. They make up a tiny percentage of all the cars that are registered in Germany. The pattern's familiar. Everyone can see the problem, but not in their own behavior. Are strict laws the only solution? If we radically increase regulations and bans, they'll only be met with resistance. It will be counterproductive, because the people who can afford it will say, no, we refuse. You can't do this to us. People aren't willing to be deprived of what they've worked decades to achieve. Not even for the climate debate. Definitely not. Should some people be allowed to pollute the planet more than others? Because everyone must live with the consequences of the climate crisis. Whether they are allowed to do it is a moral and ethical question which can be discussed for hours and hours. But it doesn't actually help the matter. The fact is, that's the way it is. But shouldn't we all cut back to reduce our carbon footprint? That's of course a fair question. But for me to actually say, I'll get rid of my vintage car to do something for the environment? I can tell you quite frankly, no, I'm not prepared to do that. People here oppose the idea of cutbacks or bans. They pin their hopes on something else. We need technology. We must develop climate-friendly technology and climate-friendly energy as quickly as possible. Relying on tech over making sacrifices? Exactly. Of course, it's very convenient to say that miracle technology will be here one day. That way, we can carry on sleeping at night and continue flying and going on cruises and whatnot. But we're lying to ourselves. CO2 emissions need to fall, dramatically. Waiting for new technologies will take too long. Of course, rich people are not the only ones polluting the environment. More tea? Yes, please. People with lower incomes are especially feeling the rising energy prices.
the clients have turned down their heating, and they're curious about their carbon footprint. They punch some information into an online CO2 calculator to work it out. They answer various questions about their lifestyle, eating habits, and house. Fully refurbished? No. Type of heating? Fossil. Car? Yes. Flights within Europe? None. This says we have a carbon footprint of 6.99 tonnes of CO2. The German average is 10.78 tonnes. So we're a bit below that. 6.99 tonnes of CO2 per person. That puts them well below the German average, but they're still over the three-ton limit that would be necessary to achieve the climate targets. One big point working against them is their gas heating. We would need to refurbish the house to save energy. Thermal retrofitting, cavity wall insulation, renovating and insulating the roof. Is that realistic? No. It would cost a lot. It may not look like it, but the house is poorly insulated. The windows are from the 1970s and the walling is more than 100 years old. You notice it when you touch the walls. We need to heat more in winter than people in a modern house. The only way to substantially cut their carbon emissions would be to invest money they simply don't have. There's a limit to how much you can save, and I think we've basically reached it. Any more cuts and we couldn't do anything anymore. We would lose what little quality of life we have. The clients just don't have the means to invest more in climate protection. They would need support to achieve the three-ton target. I think it's pretty unfair that we have to scrimp and save while others shell out more and more because they can afford to. I don't think it's right. These figures underscore her point. While the average German emits about 11 tons of greenhouse gases per year, the wealthy produce a great deal more. Millionaires each emit more than 100 tons per year. The very richest people on the planet, a small group of global multi-millionaires, are responsible for much higher emissions. People with a net worth of more than 20 million euros produce an average of 2,300 tons of greenhouse gases per year with their yachts, villas, flights and environmentally harmful investments. In the last few years, we've seen that one key element of being wealthy is how much it harms the planet. This marina in Barcelona is a meeting place for the ultra-wealthy. Stefan Gerhard has a business appointment here. He travels a lot and flies frequently. His companies own hotels and apartments all over the world. We have individual apartments all over the world. Miami Beach, Istanbul, in Batumi, Georgia, and so on. We thought we could do with one in Spain, too. An apartment in Mallorca turned into a boat in Barcelona. The company yacht here in Barcelona is both a hotel and an office for him. Stefan Gerhard is a multimillionaire. He made his fortune in the tourism industry. We can put up an awning, otherwise it gets too hot. The captain always sits here. Gerhard is away on business trips most of the time. He flies hundreds of thousands of kilometers per year. That alone results in CO2 emissions of well over 100 tons per year. 
Tourism is my business. I work in an industry that makes its money from people traveling. Of course, you can cut back if a trip isn't necessary. But if you need to travel for your job, to keep everything running smoothly, it would be crazy not to. What is necessary for the job is obvious for him. Climate change plays an interesting role in his sector. What role does climate change play when you make an investment decision? Well, that's a tricky question. I have to smile a bit at that. Of course, we consider it, but probably not in the way you would think. We take great interest in making investments in the tourism sector in places where we think climate change could benefit us. Think palm trees on the Baltic coast. We say, OK, that's how it might be one day. It's certainly gotten warmer. So we keep an eye on it, but only in deciding where to invest, so we can take advantage of climate change. Tourism or saving the climate. It's a conflict of interest Gerhard can't deny. He highlights some of his projects, installing solar panels on tennis courts or sustainably renovating a few hotels, but even he knows that won't be enough. I'm not stupid. I do think about what I could do better and how to prevent this impending catastrophe. What I can do, what everyone can do. But if I don't know what to do, it would be helpful if someone said more than just, this is what's going to happen. I need someone to do what I do as a consultant, to say, here is what we need to do. That's what I'm missing. There certainly is one idea, but it wouldn't come cheap for people like Stefan Gerhard. Every person gets an allowance of three tons of CO2 emissions per year. If you need to use more, you have to buy it. Poorer people who don't really need this amount anyway could sell part of it and earn a little extra. A billionaire would have to buy an extra 100 tons per year. Is this reasonable? Does it border on expropriation? The greater good has to take precedence. But the compromise is right there. With my wealth, I can buy the freedom to emit more carbon. But I have to pay for it. I don't just get it for free. Germany's Ministry for Economic Affairs is now also responsible for climate action. How does Minister Robert Habeck see the situation? I'll say to any camera you put me in front of, we are too late. The situation is serious. If we reach the tipping point and the climate crisis spirals out of control, it won't just be a question of a slightly lower quality of life. We're talking about a real danger to human life. People will lose their lives, there will be droughts. People will no longer be able to live as they do today. There will be wars. These are all realistic scenarios. Habeck's assessment is clear. Will he introduce a CO2 cap for everyone? He doesn't want to go that far. I'm not focused on the question of individual caps and the statistics right now. I'm looking at the concrete measures I can achieve through renewable energy, retrofitting buildings, you name it. Of course, all of these measures are necessary. But without wealthy people making major cutbacks, we will never be able to reduce carbon emissions enough. What's your plan to get the rich to emit less CO2? Production as a whole and products not manufactured in climate-friendly ways have to become more expensive. Then they will change. That's the path that Europe as a whole is taking and Germany is too. But it's a question of equality. If we have a limited amount of CO2 we can emit if we take the climate target seriously, then it should be distributed fairly. That means a cap per person. 
In all social societies, we solve the question of inequality not by prohibiting prosperity, work or the acquisition of wealth, but by taxation. But up until now, taxes have not deterred the rich from living their lives of luxury. Is it possible we won't succeed in tackling the climate crisis? It's ambitious and demanding. I can't swear that we will succeed, but we definitely can succeed. Yet even Habeck's own expert counsel warns that the measures taken so far are inadequate. And inequality when it comes to carbon emissions will only get worse. While the carbon footprint of most middle-class people in the world has stayed about the same for the last 30 years, the emissions of multi-millionaires, the richest 0.01% in the world, has almost doubled in the same time, from around 1,300 tons to more than 2,300 tons per person. Still, most politicians shy away from reigning in the rich. And yet, not doing so restricts the lives of so many more people. People will live many generations after us, and I think they should have a good life too. It's not just about what is fair, but what is necessary. We can only do it if everyone joins in. If 10% decide not to, there's no point in us doing it. They're the ones destroying things. Of course, we all have to fight climate change together. But if the rich don't do their part, this battle cannot be won. <laughs>